this Sunday morning. It's nice and cold and snowy and windy and it's just cold. But the temperature is going to go up by like 400% or something. Is it not 440? How would that work? 400% would be 40 degrees, right? Yeah, it's supposed to do that by next weekend. I'll take a 400% increase. That'll work. That sounds right. Huh? Yeah. Well, it's going to warm up. Okay, you all do the math. All I know is it's going to warm up, and I am looking forward. Huh? Yeah, so 400% of one would be what? I guess that would be 40. Yeah, I thought so. See, I do know math. There was no X, Y's, periods, quotation marks, anything like that involved, so I could figure it out. Go ahead and stand, though, if you will. We're going to turn on over into our hymnal, song number 227. Song number 227 here this morning. We'll sing there, Love Found the Way to Redeem My Soul. Song number 227. Wonderful love that rescued me, sunk deep in sin, guilty and vile as I could be. found a way. For some of us, it was a little harder than for others. Some of you are just pretty lovable folks. Some of us are not so. Hmm. <laughs> Amen. Let's pray. Father, we come to you this morning, and goodness, we want to thank you that Love found a way, Lord, through my obstinance, my pride, my sin, and save my soul, Lord, thank you for that. I pray that, God, you would meet with us here today. Thank you for those 
who are with us online. Thank you, Lord, for those who are able to be here and just uh, ask God that you would bless the service this morning. Uh, we thank you for the Sunday school hour. Uh, Lord, thank you for uh, the deals making it in safely and for every person that has driven out. God, we ask you to give a huge blessing to each one this morning as we hear from your word and Lord fellowship in the afternoon and the afternoon service that God you just bless today for your glory. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Well, it's going to be a great day. It's cold, cold, cold. Cold. It's just cold. I'm 53. This this was only cold when I was 33. At 53 it's cold, 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 cold. It's cold. Connor it's cold. Yes, there will be music and it's cold. Absolutely. But you found your way to the Lord's house. So my prayer for you is that you'll get just an enormous, huge blessing for being out here. We have the Deal family with us, missionaries to Panama. Uh, very much appreciate the Sunday school hour. Uh, I'd asked him to share some stuff about what God has done and is doing there. And the reason for that is I, I wanted you to know uh, when we give to missions, that's what it's going to, is the Lord's work in other places. And I appreciate uh, Brother Deal. There's a bunch of other preachers. Boy, the, the COVID came and the chaos came and, and uh, the government came. And, you know, we can just uh, go on and on with that. But, uh, uh, but what a lot of preachers did was try to find some ways to continue pushing the gospel out. And praise the Lord for uh, the example there in Panama and them continuing on with uh, just reaching people the best way they can. And praise the Lord for that. Uh, I want to encourage you to be in prayer for your missionaries. Um, you, you know, it, it's different and yet so, so similar. Uh, there are still places where it's illegal to be out in public. And so please keep those missionaries in prayer. Uh, keep the work in Panama in prayer. Uh, it's exciting to hear what God is doing there. Continue to pray for the Deal family. Um, they'll be back here with us in uh, about seven years, and they'll have 14 kids by then, so that'll be a blessing. Um... <laughs> no? Hmm. You sure? I, I'm going to just, I mean... Is he? Okay, right, I'm with you, I'm with you, amen. So if you get a chance, make sure you uh, say howdy to, to their kids and just let them know that we love them and, and so thankful for them to be here. And uh, Brother Deal's going to be preaching this morning and then in the afternoon we have lunch. Uh, so if you can stay, please stay. We've got food, that's as specific as I can get for you. Right, we have food, I'm trying to... We have fried chicken. Oh, yeah, yeah, we have fried chicken, right? What else we have? I know that we have some sort of corn. I know that. Oh, mashed potatoes. I did see mashed potatoes. Salads and some other stuff, yeah, right. So it would be a good lunch uh, if you can stay. And then the afternoon, we have Liberty Baptist Church that's going to come and, and join us for service. They were going to have the deals tonight, but just in an effort to get the deals home, uh, while it's still sunshiny outside as best, I mean, that's sunshiny. Um, so they're going to join us this afternoon. So I'm real excited about that. They'll be with us. Um, hopefully, Brother and Mrs. Owens will be here for lunch. Uh, they're going to try to work some of that out. But, <clears throat> but anyways, in the afternoon service, uh, Liberty Baptist will be joining us. So make sure we greet them with, with a holy kiss. No, don't, no, don't. It's COVID. Don't kiss them. Even if it's not COVID, don't kiss them. Right, Jacob? Yep, yep. It's gross. But uh, anyways, they'll be joining us this afternoon, so very excited about that. Please be in prayer. Uh, a lot coming up. Um, we have the uh, Church Ambassador Network thing coming up next Friday, so please keep that in prayer if you would. And then the, Friday, the Saturday after that, we have the, the goal event. Uh, the Freedomist folks, Daniel Myers and his team will be in. That'll be from 10.30 to 2.30. Um, and looking forward to, to that. That's going to be a, a real blessing. I'm going to try to figure out how I can play at least some of Brother Deal's Sunday school part, the first part of it, talking about socialism and how, 
how that works. I want to play part of that video uh, on that Saturday. Um, you know, it's amazing how when you say things like, well, this is where socialism is leading, people say, you're crazy. Mm -hmm. No, you're ignorant. But that never helps the conversation, does it? Um, but if you read a history book, it's amazing. Just one. If you just pick a history book and read it, you'll find that, that socialism leads to government-sponsored murder and eradication of people with certain thoughts. Every single time, 100% of the time, that's what it leads to. Um, so much so that even in Chile, they took them to the biggest soccer field and just shot them right there and, and made it a, a national spectacle, much like the, the games in ancient Rome where they brought the Christians out to fight the lions and, and whatever. So uh, it's, it's amazing when, when we talk about that stuff. But uh, So I appreciated that this morning. That was sure... Um, a blessing to hear that, because you're not going to find it in the news. You're not going to find any of that. Uh, you know, socialism's the answer. The only hope we have is the government in a dangerous place is church. But uh, anyways, the, the Lord is still working, and praise his name for that. appreciate you being here this morning. Uh, we're going to have a great, great day. And so you sit back, and I think we have a special... We have a special from, from Miss Sue, and uh, you let the Lord minister to your heart this morning. If you could own all the world and its money
we'll stand again, and as we do, we'll turn our hymnals over to song number 257. Song number 257, we're going to start this one off a cappella. And uh, so we're going to do that first verse and chorus a cappella, but we're going to have, Mrs. Bean, if you'll hit those first notes for each part on there. So uh, on 257, Tempted and Tried, you'll have to look at your hymnals there if you sing those parts, that'll help out there. Tempted and Tried, soprano, lead, here we go. Tempted and tried, we of made to wonder why it should be thus all the day long. While they Yeah. Uh-huh. 
Well, I do want to say thank you to the folks who have made stuff ready for this afternoon. We have some food and, and some desserts and all that good stuff. So I want to say thank you to all of you all. Thank you to those who have shoveled the sidewalk and swept the outside and all that, getting ready for service. That's a huge blessing, and uh, it's such a joy to just to just to be part of Temple Baptist Church. I'm I'm humbled. And then uh, uh, we put some stuff together for the folks at Georgetown and thankful uh, for Miss Chris, Christina getting that done and ready and, and just trying to find ways to reach out and be a blessing to the folks there. And uh, if any of them are watching, hey, we sure miss you. And uh, look forward to the day where we can come out and, and be with you again. But uh, keep each other in prayer. Uh, we're going to have a special now. Amen. <clears throat> time if you will here this morning and we'll turn over to song number 283 song number 283 he'll hear this morning we'll sing there i have found his grace is all complete he supplieth every need his joy unspeakable and full of glory 283 i have found his grace is all complete he supplieth
please stay standing if you would. Well, praise the Lord, it's exciting. I love missionaries. I love uh, hearing what God's doing in other places, seeing what God's doing here, and very excited for the Deal family to be here. Uh, it's been a long time, and with fond memories from when they were here ages ago, and and uh, three children or four children ago? Five. Five? You only had two? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Okay. Five children ago. Um, Oh, wow. Well, amen. Lots have happened. And uh, <laughs> church going down in Panama, and uh, Lord's working in spite of the pandemic and all that, and it's exciting. I appreciate the testimony uh, in Sunday school. Uh, looking forward to what God has for us. Brother Deal, you come preach. Well, you all may be seated. Let's see here. Do I have to do anything with this cord lid thing? Turn it on, throw it away, whatever. All right, how about now? Ooh, all right. That has a good ring to it. All right. Well, y'all aren't paying attention anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Well, it's a joy to be here. Uh, my name is David Deal. Let me introduce ourselves real fast again. My wife is Delight, and uh, we have seven children tormenting your uh, Sunday school teachers and um, or your junior church workers and uh, nursery workers. They are Deborah, Daniel, Dawson, Drew, Daisy, um, Donna, and Davy. Okay, and there they are. Um, but it is joy to be here. We, uh, last time I was here, I came by myself. My wife was pregnant with Daniel, our second born, and uh, the, the tallest redhead uh, boy there. Uh, speaking of redheads, I've always felt... Sorry for your uh, preacher being married to a redhead. Um, <laughs> until, until I was observing this special over here, I can't imagine having my mother-in-law as a redhead. <laughs> Can you imagine having a redheaded mother-in-law? You know, I, I, I've always felt sorry for your preacher, but now I don't. I, I feel sorry for the, <clears throat> was it Brother Tyler? Jacob. Jacob. Tyler, Jacob, about the same. Um, <clears throat> sorry about that, um, but anyway, uh, what a blessing to be with you. Um, I, I was telling your preacher, yeah, last time I, I came, I took your Kimber to the shooting range. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I took uh, his girls to the shooting range, and uh, I was ribbing them there. Exodus chapter 3 th uh, this morning, Exodus chapter 3. <clears throat> Well, it is a blessing to be in the United States of America. First time we were back here um, uh, was the end of August, and we got to go to church in person. It was legal to leave our house, uh, and our kids just loved it. Our kids hadn't been out of the house for six months. It's illegal. Uh, it was illegal for the children to leave their house for any reason uh, outside. I mean, leave their, their gate, their, uh, um, their property. Uh, they couldn't go anywhere for six months, and of course that just drives parents up the wall. Uh, that, that makes things interesting. We don't have TV, uh, so we did everything um, in person uh, uh, there, so it got interesting. Now, um, uh, it's interesting, I went down a couple weeks ago uh, to Panama, and uh, got, to, got to find out a couple more things that they're doing in, in Panama. Of course, they're trying to shove towards socialism. It's scarier than anything you, you can imagine. Uh, but in, uh, in Panama right now, they, they shut down everything for Christmas. They, they said, don't visit your family. It's illegal to leave your house. So they shut everything down for Christmas. They extended it through New Year's. They extended it until January 14th. And the reason why is because 29% of the entire country had COVID. Now, you would think, I don't know how many of you were in the Sunday school hour, I was going over restrictions. You would think if restrictions worked, uh, COVID wouldn't exist. Now, it, uh, what, was, what dumbfounded me um, is that they, they, uh, they quarantined everybody for a little over three weeks. Now, if you quarantine somebody for two weeks, obviously you get over COVID and uh, yada, yada. Well, 
when they shut everything down right be the week before Christmas, 29% of the entire country had COVID. When they opened back up mid-January, they got the number down from 29 to 23%. Now, I'm not as foolish enough to do thinking on my own. Um, my question is, is it a new 23%? Now, obviously, they, they say, we got the numbers down from 29 to 23. But my question is, after a little over three weeks, is it not a new 23%? And how did they get COVID while everybody's in quarantine? That's 23% of the entire country. Uh, and so um, this thing of, of quarantine don't work. Uh, at least uh, it don't work in Panama. I don't know if it works up here, but um, you tell me that... Um, I have to stay home up here. Um, I may uh, not be happy with you. Anyway, Exodus chapter 3, let's get to the Word of God this morning. I can talk uh, all about uh, uh, our ministry and, and this, that, and the other, but I do want to give you something from God's Word. Exodus chapter 3, verse 1 says, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush, and he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not burnt. Uh, and Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. Let's pray this morning. God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for allowing us to be here. I pray to God for... Uh, this service. God, please meet with us. God, please uh, don't allow the cold from outside to penetrate our hearts this morning. God, I pray that uh, we'd be on fire for you and we'd be receptive to your word. I pray to God that you please speak to our hearts. Please uh, fire us up about missions, yes, but Lord, use your word to give each person uh, exactly what they need this morning. God, if there's somebody uh, here this morning that's not sure of heaven, God is not saved God, I ask and pray that that person would yield to your sweet Holy Spirit. And God, I pray that that person would be saved today. God, I ask and pray that uh, if there's somebody here you would like to call to missions, God, would you please call that person uh, even this morning? And God, I pray that you'd use that person, that family, uh, for your honor and your glory on the foreign field. I pray to God that you please uh, meet each need according to your perfect will. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let me, uh, before I, I get to the message this morning, if there's somebody here this morning that's not sure of heaven, uh, it would not be my desire for you to come and hear the Word of God preached and not uh, at least hear a presentation of the, of the gospel. I grew up on mission field. My dad was a missionary. We went down to Mexico when I was five months old. I grew up in church, and I fought the Holy Spirit for 14 years. Uh, I didn't get saved until I was 14. But something happened... Uh, when I was 14, uh, in June of 1999, I heard a message on hell. I finally came to the realization and finally uh, mel uh, uh, God melted my, my stone heart down to this point. There's nobody worth dying going to hell for. You see, my problem was pride. I was a missionary's son. And uh, I, I, I knew I was lost. I knew the Holy Spirit had been working on me. I could not get, I, I couldn't receive Jesus Christ. I couldn't get saved because I knew I'd have to get baptized. I knew everybody would find out that I had been lost all along. But God finally used that one thought. Is there anybody and what they think about you worth dying going to hell for? Listen, if you're here this morning, you, this is your very first time coming. Lord Jesus Christ loves you and he wants to save your, your soul from hell. If you've been coming to this church or you've been coming to church for years and years and years, you've resisted the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't resist anymore. Uh, it, is, it is not worth it. What the devil has to offer is not worth it. Uh, and dying going to hell for the thought of other people is not worth it. Please receive Jesus Christ this morning. I want to preach uh, this morning to, to save folk, uh, and uh, the message is, is on um, uh, the Lord's call uh, as far as uh, this man by the name of Moses. If I, if I can ask uh, something of you for, for a few minutes, whenever I say the word Moses or the name Moses, 
most of you probably think of different events, different, uh, different characteristics and different things. But m- more than likely, if you stop and think about it, what comes to mind happened after this event. Because uh, when we say uh, Moses, many people think Ten Commandments. Well, that happened after this event, all right? Uh, we, we might think of crossing the Red Sea. Well, that happened after this event. And for, if I can, uh, for just a, mi- a few minutes, implore you to forget about the Moses that you might know of and go to this man here, because at this point in Moses' life, Moses is not the Moses that we think of. He, he's not there yet, all right? Uh, At this point in in, uh, Moses' life, he's 80 years of age on the backside of the desert, and he's 100% a failure. For the first 40 years of his life, he grew up in in Pharaoh's palace. He learned the ways of Pharaoh, and, and at 40 years of age, he tried to take matters into his own hand. He's not an Egyptian. He's not a Pharaoh's grandson. He is... He is an adopted boy, uh, being a privileged uh, young person that was able to grow up in Pharaoh's palace. But he took matters into his own hands and he killed an Egyptian guard. That happened when he was 40 years of age. He runs, and we find him here after 40 years. He, does, he hasn't succeeded in anything on the backside of the desert. In fact, he doesn't even have his own flock. We see here in verse 1, the Bible says, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law. So we we see that he's keeping his father-in-law's sheep. uh, After 40 years, all he has uh, probably to his name is his wife and son. That's probably all he has. But see... What happens in this passage is that God is going to change his life forever. And he is going to use him after this period. He he has great plans for Moses. Moses leading the children of Israel out of Egypt. Moses parting the Red Sea. Moses receiving the Ten Commandments. Moses writing the first five books of the Bible. But it all hinges on a decision. See, Moses is not there yet. Moses has no idea at this point in his life that that's in his future. He can't read the Bible and see his life. And in fact, if you read this passage, his conversation with God doesn't shed any light on the great major events that's ahead. All he knows is that God is calling him to go back to a place where he's hated and that he ran from. He's a fugitive of that land. People hate him there. People want to kill him there and take a a people that rejected his authority 40 years earlier to uh, to, to a place that he's only heard of, Canaan. A place that uh, God promised his ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But God is going to change his life forever. But Moses has to yield. Moses has to decide in this passage, am I going to say yes, no, or as many Christians do, later? to the will of God for his life. Now let me tell you this as well. It's interesting because when, Mo, when God catches up with Moses and calls him to this ministry, calls him to this task, he does not meet a willing heart. He doesn't meet up with a person who's willing to do God's will. In fact, we're going to walk through this passage, and I hope it's a blessing to you. But what I would like to, uh, to, to uh, pull out of scriptures this morning is uh, the excuses that Moses offers up to God and God's answers to his, his excuses. Because, folks, this world is dying going to hell. 
The fact of the matter is, we live in dark times. And as we saw this morning, it's not the devil's fault. Did you know that if it's dark, it's not darkness's fault? I don't know if that can even uh, if that's even a word, darknesses. But it's not the fault of darkness. It's the fault of the lack of light. Amen. Folks, all you have to do to, to defeat darkness is turn the light on. If there's darkness, well, hello. Let's start turning the light on. And folks, if we talk about Panama, we talk about, oh my goodness, how dark is their understanding, how ignorant of people, and this, that, and the other. Well, it's my fault. The government doesn't have any light to give them. The answer's not there. And by the way, God doesn't expect the government to shed any light on anything. He expects me. Because he called me there, and he had me start a church. He used me to start a church. And that church is supposed to shine and, and defeat the darkness. If darkness is willing, it's because we're not shining the light. I don't know why I got there. But one of the problems with missions is that we're just not going. Folks, I believe that every, every generation and every century has had enough Christians to reach the world. Hello, it was 12 men that turned the world upside down. There's more than 12 of us in this room. And we're not the only church even in Wichita. But God has had enough people to reach every single person in on this planet with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The problem is when God calls, not everybody goes. And, and folks, when God catches up with Moses, Moses is actually a very reluctant Christian. He doesn't want to do what God wants him to do. Just like a lot of us. Now look at, look at his excuses this morning. God says... Verse 8, I am come down to deliver them, the children of Israel. Verse 10, come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. If I can use the word go, the, the verse 10 uh, summarized is simply the, the word go. And is that not our command? We can put ourselves in, in, in Moses' sandals this morning, and, and, and really be able to relate because we don't know a lot of details. We don't know what, what's ahead. All we have is a command, go ye into all the world. And Moses, all he has to go off of is go down to Egypt and get my people out. All he has to do is simply obey the command, go. And that's our task. That's our job. That's our responsibility. And we are supposed to go. But look at this, verse 11. And Moses said unto God, here's the first excuse. I don't know about you, but I've used this one. Moses said unto God, who am I? That I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt. Can you imagine uh, Moses? Probably good, typical Christian. He's probably thinking, my brother's already there. Aaron's already in Egypt. God, he can, he can do a better job. He, he, he's better qualified. He's already there. But let me ask you this. Was it God's will to use Aaron? It was God's will to use Moses. And by the way, if Moses decides this ain't for me, God could have used anybody he wanted to do the task that he had for Moses. He may have had to wait a couple generations. Just like in this day and age, 
And, and folks, we see that principle with the children of Israel when they get to Kadesh uh, Barnea and they, they send the spies in and, and uh, uh, they get their evil report back. That generation was supposed to go in. It was God's will. And, and folks, it, it's such a beautiful portrayal of that principle because God had some specific promises for that generation that he did not have for their children. He says specifically to that generation, go in and conquer. I will send my angel before you. I will use the hornet to drive them out. But that generation had specific and special promises just for them because it was God's will for them to go over. They said, nope, not for me. God waited another generation. But folks, it was harder for that generation because they didn't have the promises of, of their parents. They go in with sword. And yeah, you can say, well, they march around the city. Well, wouldn't it have been easier if the angel just smashed it before they even got there instead of having to march around it? I mean, come on now. God had specific, it was his will. They said, no, he had to wait another generation. How many generations is it going to take for God to finally find enough willing Christians to obey him? But folks, here, Moses, he says, who am I? He's probably looking for God to reconsider his offer. Oh, well, maybe it won't work out if I use this guy. Yeah, he's been in Egypt before. It didn't go so well for him. Maybe I should. No, God isn't going to reconsider. He doesn't make mistakes. And he says, Moses, I'm sending you to Pharaoh. And Moses looks to God and says, who am I? Now, it's beautiful. Look at the next verse. Verse 12, and he said, God said, certainly I will be with thee. Certainly I will be with thee. Hey, folks, <clears throat> Moses wasn't important. Moses was just the vessel that God wanted to pick up and use. Now, folks, I, I love, I, I love um, uh, uh, woodworking. I love uh, doing certain things. In the video, you, you might see the pulpit that I built for our church. Um, uh, I, I've done a couple different things. I just uh, did, uh, made my wife a Valentine gift, uh, a cutting board. And uh, I, I love doing uh, different things. But you know what? Whenever I bring something to my, my, my wife, she loves me. By the way, did you know that you can get on Pinterest from Panama? That'll scare you right there. I think I'm more scared of Pinterest than I am of the socialists, okay? Um, but we're driving down the road one time, and she says, look, somebody thrown away a bed. And it was nasty. It's like, yeah. She says, I saw this idea on Pinterest. Shivers go up my spine. Y'all, you fellas in the United States ever heard that? comment oh okay so you know what I did in order to preserve my marriage drop the family off go back pick up the bed it had vomit and alcohol on it so bad I had to scrape it off and it looked like tar my, love, my wife loves me I made a bench out of it, and that was her Pinterest idea, okay? I took the bed, reshaped it. When I cut the wood, the inside of the wood smelled like alcohol. I mean, it was bad. So I made this for her, but let me tell you this. When I'm all said and done, I bring it in the house. She doesn't say, oh, what amazing tools. The tools did not matter. Guess who mattered at that point? You know, all that toil paid off. I was miss number one in her life. 
for a few minutes. You know, but you know what? She didn't even think about the tools, and it doesn't matter. We don't matter. We're just the tools. But there's an almighty, all-powerful hand that wants to pick us up. And every once in a while, we get looking at the instrument, we say, you know what? I'm incapable. And God says, hey, big boy, look up here. Why are you looking at the instrument? Why are you looking at the vessel? Yes, you're made of clay, and yes, you're incapable. But what does that matter? Look at the hand that wants to pick you up. Yes, you can't cross that sea by yourself, but I've got it all worked out. You can't get children of Israel across the desert, but I've got it all worked out. You can't feed them out there, but I've got it all worked out. He had it all planned, and Moses didn't matter. But his first excuse was, me? And folks, if we get caught on that excuse, we will not do what God wants us to do. Look at the second excuse here. Verse 13, And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? Now, now let, me, let me tell you quickly, what Moses is looking for here is he's looking for authorization. He's not looking for a name. See, he remembers quite a while before this event when he tried to take matters in his own hands and with his own authority be a leader to the Israelites. And they said, uh, what are you going to do with us? You're going to kill us like you did the Egyptian yesterday? So he knows that he can't go to the children of Israel and say, Moses said. He has to use somebody else's name as his authorization. And so he says, listen, when I get to the children of Israel and they ask, who sent you? You know, it's sort of like in your house when you send one of your children to tell the other children what to do. What do you always tell them? Tell them Mom said. Because if Bubba goes and tells Bubbet, thus saith Bubba, Bubba might get kicked or whatever. All right? But if Bubba says, Mom said, and by the way, that is the highest authority in the house. Or Dad said, you know, her general. Um, Dad said, what, what, what's happening? They're using mom and dad's authority as this is what we're going to do. And Moses is looking for authority here. He's looking for authorization. And look at this, verse 14. God said unto Moses, I am. Now, I'm sure uh, Moses looking at ha heaven and saying, uh, that's exactly what I asked you. Who are you? You haven't answered the question. You see, you, the, the children of Israel didn't know God as the I am. After this point, they're going, to, they're going to know him as the great I am. But before this point, they don't know him with the name I am. This is a new name. Can you imagine Moses playing this thing through his mind? I'm going to go down to the children of Israel. I know they're not going to do what I say. And I'm going to say, I am sent me. No name, basically. God with no name. I'm sure that's what he's thinking. And God says, listen, I am that I am. And he said, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. Now, let me explain to you what's happening here. God has full intentions of revealing who he is. But it cannot happen at this point. You see, God reveals himself to one class of Christian, and that is to the obedient. You see, Moses is going to find out who God is and what God's capable of. But he's not until he takes a step of faith. Hey, folks, I don't know what I'm doing in ministry. I am 
the most unworthy vessel. When God called me to, to missions, I did not want to go. All of my career, all of my ministry had been to children. I knew if God was calling me to missions, that means pastoring adults. Ew. Was in the future. And that scared me beyond description. I did not want that. Anything but that. I'll clean bathrooms before I wanted to do that. I'll do anything before pastoring adults. I didn't want to do that. And God called me, and, and folks, what, what is so exciting about it is it's not me. He's just doing it through me. But folks, I was not able to see what he was capable of until I said, okay, fine. And then he would show me something else, and I, I'd say, well, it went well last time. Okay, fine. Okay, I, I've seen this before. Okay, fine. And keep taking steps of faith. Folks, I had no idea what I was getting myself into, but that's some of the most exciting part about missions is that we don't know what's ahead. We don't know who's ahead. We have no idea what's going on, but we do know one thing. If God says it, you do it, and then you get to see who God is and what God is capable of. One, one reason I'm so excited about reaching Panama, we're trying to put a, a, a John and Roman. Uh, we did, we did a reach in Kansas where we put a gospel track on every door. I, I asked God, can we just do gospel tracks? And he said, no, John and Romans. John and Romans takes it to a whole new level uh, of ministry. And I asked the Lord to, to just do tracks or door hangers or, or whatever. God said, no. And God has big plans. I am just excited to see what God's going to do. I'm just one piece of the puzzle. I'm just one person that's trying to, trying to get things kick-started. And by the way, once it gets kick-started, I can just back off and watch God at work. Because what we're doing is we're taking John Romans down, and we're trying to put a John Roman on the door of every house in, in Panama. I have no idea what I'm getting myself into. You know what? That, might, that, that would have scared me four years ago. But it excites me now. Because God is doing something. And all I have to do is say, yes, sir, take a step. God provides. God does it all. And then I take a step, and God provides. God does it all. It is so amazing in ministry. And folks, God had full intentions in, of showing Moses, I am your protection. I am your provision. I am your everything. But Moses could not see that here because he hadn't obeyed yet. But folks, you get him down to Egypt and he starts experiencing who God is. What's your name? I am blank. You take a step, and I'll fill in the blank. Okay, I'm the only one excited about that, but it's good stuff. Chapter 4, verse 1. Y'all went dead on me there. I'll just move on to the next thing. Y'all are thinking about lunch already? We're having lunch. Come on, people. I went down to Panama two weeks ago. And uh, it's, it's illegal to go around without a mask. And uh, I don't know about you. I just, I just like pushing buttons. <laughs> I was in Ace Hardware uh, a couple days ago. And uh, I went in without a mask. Uh, the, one, of the, uh, one of the employees was yelling at a woman with a little child about not wearing a mask. And I got behind him. I, I walked to the back. I had, I had employees working with me. I have no mask on. I get to the counter, and, and uh, Alex is at the counter. I'm three, three person. Of course, you have so much distance in me. I'm, I'm in the tool section waiting. You know, there's only two other people. She says, you have a mask? Anyway, 
I'm not against anybody who wears a mask. I just like pushing buttons, okay? Um, and, and, you know, okay. Um, I put my mask on. I put it on. But I just wanted to know how far it could go without it. Um, so I'm in Panama. And um, uh, if, if I see a police officer, I put my mask on. If I don't, I, I'm not going to walk without a mask or, or with a mask on, okay? Um, that, that's just dangerous. So, so uh, and, and especially with, with the speed that I go. Uh, no Panamanian can keep up with me. Hallelujah. Uh, but I, 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 uh, I preach for our, our people, and I had I'd gotten the COVID test that morning. It was a Thursday morning uh, to be able to fly back to, to the United States. And I had tested negative, okay? I don't have anything to give you. And if you want to give it to me, great, you know? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll go through it again. I, I had it uh, after the longest day of having to wear a mask, which is when we flew up here, okay? Uh, I, got, I got it in the airport, and I survived, okay? Um, I know it's dangerous, but, but hey, uh, I, I enjoy it. So I, I preaching, and I said, listen, this is my philosophy Please don't get offended. But if I go to a restaurant, I can take my mask off to eat physical food. I said, I'm preaching without a mask. One, because I tested negative, and I'm not going to give anything to you. And I'm fine with you giving me whatever. And number two is, we're eating spiritual food here. Now, that's just me. I know I'm a nut. But anyway, um... Chapter 4, verse 1. I don't know why I said that. But anyway, Moses said, answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice, for they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. Now, now folks, um, God uses here a pronoun. Now, it, uh, if you don't know English, this will be Greek to you. But for every pronoun, there's an antecedent. In other words, the noun that comes before the pronoun that the pronoun refers back to, okay? The antecedent for, uh, I've taught Spanish, I've taught English, okay? I'm, I'm completely confused, okay? Um, but the antecedent for they in verse 1 is the children of Israel. You have to understand that Moses is not concerned about Pharaoh. God already said in, in uh, I think it's verses 18, 19, and 20, that uh, I'm just going to obliterate Egypt and Pharaoh will let you go. So Moses is not concerned about Pharaoh, but he is concerned about the flock that's going to follow him out of Egypt. The congregation of Israel. All right? And he says here, they will not believe me. Because you have to understand that because in verse 2, uh, God starts doing something. The Lord said unto him, what is that in thine hand? And he said, a rod. And, and of course, you know the miracle. He says, cast it on the ground, becomes a serpent. Pick it up again, it'll become a, a, a staff. Uh, verse uh, 5, that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, here, here's another reason why we know that he's talking about the children of Israel, their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, hath appeared unto them. And then in verse 6, 7, and 8, he says, put your hand in your bosom, pull it out, it'll become leprous. He gives them a, another uh, sign or a, a miracle. Verse 9 and it shall come to pass, if they will not believe also these two signs, the uh, rod becoming a serpent and also the hand becoming leprous, neither hearken unto thy voice, that thou shalt take of the water of the river, pour it upon the dry land, and the water which thou takest out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land. So, so here God gives him three miracles. He says, okay, you're concerned about the children of Israel. You're going to go down there. They're not going to follow you out of Egypt. Okay, I'm going to devastate Egypt, and they're still not going to... Okay, fine. Uh, in order to convince them, do these three things. Uh, I'm going to give you three miracles. We're going to play it out right here, and, and you take those miracles down to Egypt, and if you need them, <clears throat> if you need them, it's amazing. Moses gets to Egypt... And he finds out he doesn't need these miracles. There is no mention that he has to use any persuasion with the children of Israel. He gets there and they're like, yes, let's go. And folks, let me tell you something. Y'all have some, you, you moved a step so far away. 
When God is working in an individual's heart about a ministry that he wants to use that person in, you have to understand that on the other end of the line, God's also at work. Hey, folks, in October of 2013, God called me to the country of Panama as a missionary. I was sitting at the Heritage Baptist Church in Lawrence, Kansas, and I was listening to a, 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 the first night of missions conference, first service of the missions conference, and God was dealing with my heart. I had no idea that while God was working there, that God was also working in Panama. We get down there, and we have found person after person after person. Pastor, you're finally here. I have pray, been praying for years that God would give me a church in my area. It's happened multiple times. We're out door knocking. Knocked on the door. Sonia comes to the door. Uh, I use this illustration in Sunday school, so I'll abbreviate but she and her husband come to church the next day. They keep coming back to church. They bring 13 other people with them over the course of several months. During, during a, I, I took Emmanuel out soul winning. He was a lost man. He was a <laughs> Pentecostal. Well, have you ever gone soul winning with a Pentecostal? It's fun. Anyway, so we're out soul winning. He told me, Pastor, you'll never believe why we come to your church. Now, of course, they're Pentecostal. I knew it wasn't going to last unless they got saved. But um, he said, when you knocked on our door, Sonia was inside our house praying, God, would you give us a church close to us? Could you allow the pastor to be a man? They're Pentecostals. Their pastor was a woman. She had a couple other uh, prayer requests. And then you knocked on our door invited her, invited us to a church you're starting. And he said, we were so impressed we came to church. I've had that happen twice, if not three times. Amana Anna uh, comes through the, the church door one Sunday, and she hasn't missed yet. Amana Anna is one of our nursery workers. Her son is preaching today for me in Panama. She came to the, through the door. She says, Pastor, I have been praying for five years that God bring a church to this area. I didn't know back in October of 2013 that God had everything figured out on this end. But folks, what happened with Moses kind of plays itself out in a slightly different form in a lot of lives. God calls, finds reluctant Christians, but he does what it takes to get them to go. Okay, for, for some, it's just a matter of go, and they're ready. For some, it's a matter of let's work through a couple things, and they go. For Moses, it was, hey, listen, all right, fine, you're concerned about this children of Israel thing, let me give you some things to just kind of get you over this hump. But for some, it's that spouse, those children. And I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not making things up. I have heard many, 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 many times in ministry, years ago, God called me to such and such. I would not go because of my children. I would not go because of my wife. I would not go because of my husband. I would not go, but I have no excuse now. That wife is gone. That husband's gone. The children are gone. Folks, all I'm saying this morning is that God will do what it takes to get us to simply obey. But look at, look at this uh, last thing that, this morning. This afternoon. Y'all want to know what time it is? No, your business. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, verse 10. I'll be done uh, very, very quickly here. Uh, verse 10. Bible. And Moses said unto the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. So he says, listen, I have physical incapabilities. 
there's something physical in my life that keeps me from being able to do the ministry that you, you called me to do. Look at verse 11. God's response is this, and the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Or who, hath, who maketh the dumb, or deaf, or the seeing, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? In other words, I've designed you just the way I want you. Hey, Moses, I want you to go. But, 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 but I uh, th- th- stutter. You know, I was born with a speech impediment. I went through two years when I was very, very young. Two years of speech therapy just to be able to talk normal. I still stutter. But it's amazing to me the two times I stutter, I hardly ever stutter in Spanish, which just helps me see that God wants me there. Um, I grew up with Spanish-speaking people. I'm there with Spanish-speaking people. But in America, the two times I stutter the least is when I'm out soul winning, when I'm presenting the gospel, and when I'm preaching. You'll see in the video in just a few minutes uh, how I stutter because I'm not preaching. And it's just a constant confirmation that God's using me when he gets me beyond my weakness. And he, he, he just, just moves my weakness to the side and uses me in his strength. Folks, can you not see Moses? He said, he's looking at his life. He says, I'm too old. I'm too much a failure. I stutter. I have physical incapabilities. I will give you the list of why I can't serve you. And God says, no, that list is the very thing that I gave you for what I'm calling you for. You see, when God catches up with Moses, Moses has two key things that God is going to use for his honor and glory. It's amazing because it's what he has in his hand and what he has in his head. Humanly speaking, very insignificant And most people would probably never know. But what he has in his hand is a rod. Let me ask you this. Does God ever use that rod? Can I tell you why? Because it's what he had to offer to God. And it's enough. Hey, listen. What does he have in his head? Two key things. Pharaoh, law, palace, and wilderness. I'll let your imagination go go wild there. Wow! Do you not see that Moses is well prepared? Well established for what God has? But folks, that's not what Moses saw. He says... I stutter. God says, I designed you. And folks, if we don't obey, we won't ever be able to see why God designed us the way he designed us. Do you have an excuse this morning? Has God worked in your heart Has God called you to something in particular? And you see yourself as incapable of doing the job. But folks, we are are not focused on the right thing. I hope this morning God can deal with our excuses and get a body of believers to obey and accomplish what he has for us to accomplish. Let us pray. God, we do thank you so much for your word. God, we do thank you for the example of Moses, a man maybe that most people would look at and think a a total failure at that point in his life. Holy God, help us to see how you used him simply because he obeyed. God, I pray that there would be heart sensitive today to any type of calling that you have upon them, any type of work that you have in their hearts. Ask and pray 
that that you bring them to a point of surrender. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. throne of grace this morning give them to the Lord that can turn them into something magnificent biggest problem with our excuses is that most of the time they're valid when we rely when we rely on the validity of our excuses we deny the power of God sing together song number 156 is your all on the altar is it you holding something back and i just encourage you this morning would you just give it all to god this morning song number 156 is your all on the altar you sing along there with brother ben if god's working on your heart though would you spend a moment with him this morning something amazing.
doubted. He offered excuses. Every one of them were valid. God didn't walk away. You doubt, I doubt, I have lots of excuses. I have more than Moses. And mine are better. God didn't walk away. We all doubt. And I think <clears throat> I think there's some uh, there's something good about that because the other side of is I got this. Right? God would say Never mind. <laughs> Let's go find someone else. And I understand that it was a false sense of humility and whatever. I, I do get that. But he was showing all the reasons why he wasn't worthy or able. And that's the whole point. I'm sure not worthy and I'm sure not able. But he's worthy and he's able. And the best I have to give may not be much. But he can do much with whatever you have to give, with whatever I have to give. So it's okay to doubt, and it's okay to offer excuses. You just got to be willing to listen when God, I was going to say argues with you, but that's not probably proper. When God, when God explains things to you, <laughs> something like that. Amen. Appreciate that for the deal. Lord, we love you, and we thank you for just time together in your house this morning. Lord, I know it's a, it's a day that offers challenges, but Lord, we're here, and I thank you for it. I thank you, Lord, for speaking to our hearts. I thank you, Lord, for showing up. And I just pray that, Father, you'd bless the rest of this afternoon for your glory. We love you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Go ahead and be seated. We are going to go ahead and receive an offering this, this, um, this afternoon. And then we'll pray for the food and, and the offering and all that together. And uh, hey, Cindy, what's uh, what should be the the uh, the direction? Is um, if if you can find out real quick, yeah. And then um, so we're going to receive an offering. Uh, sure, I'm thankful for the deals and their work. Uh, you, you know, wouldn't it be easier for God to send retired people to the mission field? They don't have kids. They don't have you know what I'm saying? I mean, seriously, wouldn't it be easier? You're looking at me like I'm crazy. No, seriously, it would be easier. It'd be a lot easier, right? You know how often God sends retired people to the mission field? He does send some, but very seldom. You know why? Because it's not about easier. It's about faith. It's about trusting him. It's about watching him do the impossible. Amen? If it's not impossible, then I could have done it. If it's impossible, then God had to do it, amen, and, and what a blessing. So keep the deals in prayer, but we sure want to try to be a blessing to them. Uh, uh, what's the instruction? Okay, okay. Yep, so we will, we will have, if you want to come back at 115, we'll, we'll have... 1.30, if you want to come back, tune back in at 1.30, um, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll at least have an accurate countdown or something, or we'll be singing, or, or I'll be reciting poetry or something at 1.30, all right? So tune back in at 1.30, and I'll pray for the offering and for the food, and then we'll just mill about until it gets here, Amen. Amen. All right. So we'll go ahead and receive the offering. Uh, there's plates right back uh, there by the sound booth, plates up here, and you can give online through the Tithely app or on our website through the Give button.
we're inside a snow globe, right? That's kind of cool. You look out there. And the unclouded day, well, I know what happened to the cloud. It got blowed up and it's fallen down right there. <laughs> That's what happened to it. Amen. I am telling you what, it's gorgeous through the window. <laughs> through the window. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, we love you and we thank you for just the privilege it is to be in your house, to worship together and, and to join online. Lord, I pray that you'd bless this offering. Uh, Lord, that you would magnify it. You know the needs we have coming up. And, and uh, God, just pray that you would uh, not just supply those needs, but Lord, uh, just magnify that, that we can just serve you better. Uh, pray that you'd bless the food and the fellowship, uh, Lord, and, and uh, just, uh, just draw us closer to you and closer to one another. We love you in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Brother Ben. Well, we do have a couple tables that are already set up in the junior church room, and then we have some out there, and then just kind of uh, around, you can feel free to eat at. But I will also encourage you this, and I know the kids aren't in here, the younger ones aren't in here. Please make sure to help them clean up, or make sure they clean up, or you clean up, everybody cleans up, so that way the church doesn't look horrible, or they find like carrots underneath stuff like three weeks from now that have turned into I don't know what they turn into after a while but uh anyway just help the place stay clean as you're eating if you pick some, if you drop something pick it up it's, it's a, yeah this is almost like pre-covid rules where we forgot how to wash hands and stuff like that so uh, help clean up though help the kids make sure they get cleaned up that'd be great and just go ahead and stand we'll turn on over to song number 227 Song number 227, let's sing that first verse one more time as we dismiss this afternoon. Wonderful love that rescued me. Wonderful love that rescued me. Sunk deep in sin, guilty and vile as I could be. No hope within, when every ray of light had fled. Oh, glorious day, raising my soul from Nobody else knows because they don't have their hymnals hardly, but uh, I'll trade you. You take it. Yay. All right. We were singing extra because the chicken was coming in. So we uh, will buffet line like we normally do just right out there. If we. Yeah, Ben, it been, been explained that if we can let uh, the Deal family and, and our, our 
Ooh, um, most experienced people, aged, hoary heads. You're you're there, brother. I'm getting there. Yeah, amen. But uh, food's ready. We already prayed, so go right ahead and jump in line there, and we'll eat. Amen. <laughs>